Weeknights at 7.30. A fatal plane crash near a crowded New Jersey resort. Now from WWOR TV, Ridge Wells, Jennifer Volapi, and Sports with Matt Schwartz. This is News 9 Weekend. Good evening. Jennifer has the night off. At least three people are dead, killed in a plane crash in northwestern New Jersey. Police say the single-engine aircraft went down in a wooded area near Lake Mohawk in Sussex County. The resort area was reportedly crowded with visitors at the time, and some of them say they saw the plane fall from the sky. It exploded in there, then as it hit the ground, another explosion, and then the, the ground just went crazy. Police say the victims were burned beyond recognition. Efforts are being made to identify them. The cause of that crash has not yet been determined. And five Patterson factories are still smoldering tonight. As News 9's Kevin Rosen reports, they are among recent targets of an arsonist. The fire raced out of control early this morning, spreading through five buildings. Two were occupied by the Empire Marble Company. The others were vacant. 40 people worked at the company and are out of jobs. No one was hurt. This was the third fire in three weeks in this part of Patterson, and Mayor Frank Graves says there is no question how all three started. Mayor, you think somebody said this. Why? Oh, we're positive somebody said it. A news delivery man very early this morning saw three males run out of this building, and he knew there was a fire bug in the area, and he observed them, but they didn't do anything except walk away. 20 minutes later, he came back through the same street, and the building was a raging inferno. Department of Environmental Protection officials were on hand to make sure flames didn't spread to a chemical storage area nearby. Do you think they're safe at this point? Oh, certainly, yes. I don't think the fire, uh, the building in between the two, I don't see them becoming involved at this point. Less than an hour after this fire started, an apartment house only blocks away caught fire, but was quickly put out. Do you think he is the same person that started the fire across the river at the home? We're sure it's him. It was a five-gallon can of gasoline. The people woke up. We were able to get there, salvage the can of gasoline, etc. He is becoming very dangerous. Elena Makarevich lives in that apartment house. Are you worried that someone might try it again? Possibly. Possibly. And other neighbors can only uh, think that said. it will happen we'll again. Around, right. Are you worried that someone is on the oh. loose running around sure, here? Sure, because I'm worried if you eat my property. Firemen have contained this fire, but they say it could burn for days. Because these buildings may have eventually been torn down and turned into a housing development, Mayor Graves says it may be a blessing in disguise. But this fire could have been a lot more tragic if lives were lost. And the fact still remains that there is a fire bug on the loose. In Patterson, Kevin Rosen, News 9. Patterson police say four officers are working on this case and they are urging residents to be on the lookout for arsonists. And tonight there are calls for a wider investigation into another disastrous fire, the one that raced through the Schomburg Plaza in Harlem last March. We can't bring the lives back. We can't really soften the pain of those uh, that are left here behind. But what we can certainly do is to make certain that we limit the possibilities of this happening again. The fire claimed seven lives, three of the victims leaping to their deaths. Congressman Charles Rangel wants both the state and federal governments to join the investigation. The Schomburg was built with federal dollars, but a recent report by a fire department inquiry board found a series of construction problems that helped the fire spread. When you find a structure like this that has been declared that it was a safe residence, where you find complaints, and the management and the owners and the cities have all inspected that and allowed the people to live here, that's where government comes in. The potential hazards triggered a renter strike even before the fire, and tenants say nothing has been done since the tragedy. More than half of the Schomburg 600 residents have been putting their rent checks into an escrow account. Because of the fire in this strike, we are not giving them any money until all repairs are completed and are satisfactory to us. Whereas last year, we let them go with it. The inquiry board found fire dispatchers mishandled the calls from residents. 
but one city council member is calling on the fire department to release more of its records. We have re received reports from tenants that they began calling at 7 o'clock. The, the records they released were only from 757 when they received the first call. We would like to see the entire record. The city council will hold a public hearing on the Schomburg fire later this month. And new information in the Stark investigation tops news from around the world tonight. U.S. sources say the attack on the U.S. Stark last May was carried out by two Iraqi jets, not one. And some are saying the incident was staged to prod U.S. intervention in stepping up presence in the Persian Gulf. Another reflagged tanker is steaming through the Persian Gulf under U.S. naval escort tonight. The ship, the Gas Prince, left Kuwait early today, and it is already past the area where the supertanker Bridgeton hit a mine last month. And nearby in Iran, angry mobs today ransacked the embassies of France, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia in Tehran. The rampage came in the wake of reports that hundreds of Iranian pilgrims were killed in clashes with police in Mecca. And a state of emergency tonight in Edmonton, Alberta, in the wake of a devastating tornado. At least 27 people died in the twister that swept through that area yesterday. Hundreds are reported injured. Meanwhile, rescue workers are continuing the search for more survivors. Thank God they're all safe. I think if anyone is under there now, then they're, they're not likely to be alive. A number of people are still missing, and authorities say they expect the death toll to continue rising. And there's much more news ahead tonight on News 9 Weekend. Stay with us. Records presents the superstar sound of Motown. Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, and the Miracles. I said the mad emotion. The solid gold hits that define the sound of young America. What's going on? Marvin, Smokey and the Miracles, together for the first time in one great collection on three LPs, two cassettes, or compact discs. My mama told me, you better shop around. Never must have saved your precious love. Now you can cruise or dance to the sound of the Motor City Beat, only through this exclusive TV offer. Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, and the Miracles' greatest hits. Available on three LPs or two long play cassettes, just $14.95. Compact disc, only $16.95. To order, credit card customers call 1-800-453-2800. If busy, call 1-800-426-8600. Or send just $14.95 for albums or cassette, or $16.95 for compact disc. Plus $3 shipping and handling to Marvin and Smokey, P.O. Box 7000-43, Amherst, New York. The new Hyundai Excels are rugged enough to take your family any place they want to go. With front-wheel drive and four-wheel independent suspension, they can turn a rough road into a smooth ride. They're reliable, too, with more standard features than any car in their class. And since you can get both Excels for less than the average price of a new car, it's now actually possible for one family to be in two places at once. Hyundai. Cars that make sense. The arrest of a New York State senator tops tonight's tri-state report. Andrew Jenkins, a Queens Democrat, was taken into custody after reportedly taking $150,000 in cash from an undercover agent. Jenkins was allegedly going to take the money out of the country illegally. And in New Jersey, Irvington's plan to tow away abandoned cars is apparently working too well. There's no more room at the pound. More than 400 abandoned vehicles have been towed so far, and now there is no place to put them. Some of the better cars will be moved to a garage. And in New Haven, U.S. Attorney Stanley Twardy says he'll be back on the job on Monday after being hit by a car while jogging. Twardy was treated for minor injuries after he was thrown over the hood of a car on Thursday. And police in Queens tonight are pressing their search for the so-called parking lot rapist. A sketch has been released by the suspect or of the suspect in several attacks in Rigo Park. He's described as being 20 to 25 years old, 5 feet 7 to 5 feet 10, and weighing 150 to 170 pounds. He has black, close-cropped hair and brown eyes. New Jersey Right to Lifers continued speaking out today in the Nancy Ellen Jobes case. They staged a protest at Morristown Hospital. That's where Jobes is being kept alive on feeding tubes. She's been unconscious since 1980. 
Recently, the U.S. Supreme Court cleared the way to have the tubes disconnected despite that ruling. Opponents say they will keep speaking I'm out. I'm hoping that, the, uh, that there will be enough medical uh, per personnel inside this hospital who will stand for the Hippocratic Oath to first do no harm, and removing food and water will cause her death. At one point today, the right to lifers tried to visit Jobs, but were turned away by hospital security. The hospital has not issued a statement about today's protest. And coming up tonight on News 9 Primetime, Carl Cherkin with all today's sports. And coming up, Reg, we're going to look at a heck of a horse race, the Haskell Invitational. And you're invited to take another look at the Mets and Expos. Can't get enough of the good stuff now, can you? going to score. Imagine waking up to find everything just as good as it can be. Imagine having nothing but the best to look forward to. Guys should be sunny for the rest of the century. Now imagine the remarkable new Prisus, imported by Mitsubishi, with front-wheel drive and independent suspension, and the pure enjoyment of over 60 standard features, all for just over $5,000. The new Prisus. Now that it's here, maybe everything else will fall into place. The new Prisus, imported by Mitsubishi. We were being strangled by our debts. We couldn't sleep, our work suffered. We'd heard about bankruptcy, but didn't know much about it. By the time the Brills came to Jacoby and Myers, they were being harassed by their creditors, their wages were attached, and their home was in foreclosure. We stopped all that. We figured our creditors were using lawyers to protect their rights. Why shouldn't we? The Brills just needed a chance to get a fresh start. Jacoby and Myers, when it's time to call a lawyer about a bankruptcy. When I was a kid, if you asked me what kind of guy turned me on, I'd have said he has to look like a movie star. He'd be about six feet tall, have an Italian accent, and take me dancing every night. But I'm not a kid anymore. Hey. Hey. We, uh, staying home again? We're staying home again. Mm. The more refreshing, more distinctive character of Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Regular or diet. For when your tastes grow up. The Mets take on the Expo Sunday at 1.30 on Channel 9. Well, in addition to the Mets' blowout today, we had a heavyweight title fight. That's right. The high rollers in Las Vegas tonight. Citizens all across the country betting big bucks on the heavyweight unification bout between Mike Tyson and Tony Tucker. Okay, so it's not Ali and Frazier. It's the best we got right now, folks. Tucker surprised a whole lot of people in this fight. He carried it early, but it goes the full 12 rounds, ends in a unanimous decision. Michael Tyson, now 31-0 as a pro, still the heavyweight champion of the world. And with just 60 games to go, with an eye on the scoreboard, where the cards up by six and a half games at the start of the night were going up against the Pirates in St. Louis. The Mets were up in Montreal. Time to pay back Buck Rogers and the Expos for last night's 13-3 beating. In the top of the second, with the score tied 1-1, Howard Johnson on first as Dave Magadan sends a screamer down the line. And right now, watch Hojo. He doesn't know where to go or what to do. Finally, he puts it into high gear. Good thing Hojo's a good athlete. He comes all the way around to score on the play. Magadan winds up on third, and the Mets lead it at this point 2-1. Top of the fourth, Mets add to that advantage. Lenny Dykstra bloops a base hit in the short left center. Tim Raines with a nice jump save, but not before two runs score. Then in the sixth, it's see you later time for Howard Johnson as he uncorks his 26th home run of the year. Got that, Whitey Herzog. A grand salami off a less than pleased Randy St. Clair. The Mets win it 12-4. Terry Leach now 9-0. The Mets don't gain any ground, though. The Cards beat the Pirates in 10, final count of 7-6. After the Tigers beat the Yanks 10-5 at the stadium, the Bombers still lead Detroit by two. The Blue Jays miss a chance to move up. They trail by two and a half. This afternoon at the stadium, we'll pick it up in the top of the third. Alan Trammell rips a double to right center. Goes in the gap, and it scores Lou Whitaker. It's two to nothing. Tigers lead in the top of the fifth. Pat Clements with the 59-footer. That's a wild pitch as it skips past Rick Cerrone. Whitaker and Kirk Gibson come on the score. 
And the Tigers go ahead five zip after five. In the seventh, back-to-back -back home runs by Darrell Evans and this one by Chet Lemon off Charles Hudson. That makes it 10 to one Tigers. Now watch Hudson's next pitch. Behind ex-Yankee Mike Heath, umpire Ken Kaiser doesn't hesitate for a second, giving Hudson the old heave-ho. Now watch Lou Pinella come right out to argue. No chance on this one, Lou. The final, once again, 10 to five Tigers. Now, even if you couldn't make it down to the shore this weekend, come on with us down to Monmouth Park in Oceanport. The 20th running of the Haskell Invitational, a rematch between Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner Ali Sheba and Belmont champ Bet Twice. Now, let's get the call from Dave Johnson. Get on the stretch, they come. Bet Twice has the lead ahead. Lost hold on the inside, hanging tough. Ali Sheba tries to gain back. Bet twice paid four sixty to win. Ali Sheba three dollars to place as Bet twice gets the better of Ali Sheba once again. Now the score you've all been waiting for from the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, the first ever Arena Football League Championship game, the Denver Dynamite forty five and the Pittsburgh Gladiators sixteen. They're still playing though late in the fourth quarter. And in the arena of NFL football, the Giants are back at work at Pace University. While they're trying to accommodate hundreds of requests from fans for autographs, the Giants have to prepare for five straight toughies to start the season. They'll open up at Chicago, then Dallas at home, then at Miami, followed by the 49ers and Redskins in the Meadowlands. That lineup's even got extra large size William Roberts wearing a helmet at all times. Because as Bill Parcells told Steve Albert, there's a sense of urgency here. I think there will be as training camp goes on. I think, uh, you know, our, uh, the, one of the goals of camp is to try to get ready to play the first game, and obviously the early part of the season is going to be very competitive. Ah, yes. Once again, Bill Parcells, the master of understatement, already in midseason form. Have a good weekend, everybody. Rich? Okay, and coming up next on News 9 Weekend, who is the fastest baby of them all? We'll find out when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> has wagons like these. Now during the Ford Wagon Leadership Celebration, get special low financing or cash back on Taurus and Escort Wagon. ね、今シャトルに住んでるんですよ。<laughs> Only AT&T keeps you this close anywhere in the world. AT&T International Long Distance. Well, the weekend is turning out to be picture perfect, but more hot, humid weather is on the way. This is certainly not a day for ducks, no rain in sight. But right now we have clear skies and the temperature is currently 72 degrees. Winds are calm, the barometer is rising, humidity though is high. The national map shows a high-pressure system over eastern Canada with cool, dry air pushing south. The satellite, however, reveals a warm front in western Pennsylvania and the Great Lakes, and it is moving this way. Radar shows that we're in the clear, however, through tomorrow. So the forecast for tonight, clear and cool with low humidity. Tomorrow, a mixture of sun and clouds with a high temperature near 85. And tomorrow night, increasing cloudiness with a chance of a shower. Monday, variable cloudiness, hazy and humid. High temperature near 85 degrees. And finally tonight in Cherry Hill, a diaper derby that kicked off the 49th annual New Jersey State Fair. Parents tease toddlers with toys to coax them to the finish line. 16-month-old Cedric Perry from Trenton led the pack, and he was so elated with the sweet taste of victory, he crawled back to the starting line to run the race all over again. Little Cedric received a $100 check for winning the diaper derby. With a name like that, he better learn to fight. <laughs> Not quite the Haskell, huh? That's it for News 9 Weekend. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to join us on Monday for News 9 at noon. I'm Reg Wells. Good night. Good night. If you see news happening, call the News 9 hotline at 1-800-537-9999.
Who knows more? Who knows more about TV Guide than the checkers at a supermarket? Is it near your register there? Right in front, where everybody can grab it. Where do you put the uh, TV Guide in the bag? Usually right on top so they can look at the picture. If it's a double paper bag, it's got to go right between the folds so it doesn't get crushed or smashed or wrinkled or anything. Is it the most exciting thing to grab in the whole supermarket? Well, just about. <laughs> if you don't read TV Guide this week, you might be missing something. We'll be waiting for you at the checkout counter. With your... TV Guide. <laughs> When I was a little girl, I loved two things, dessert and Tommy, what's his name? I got over Tommy. I still love dessert. Well, I have it every chance I get, as long as it's sugar-free Jell-O gelatin. It's all Nutrisweet with only eight wonderful little calories. Sugar-free Jell-O gelatin, the dessert you don't have to desert. Eat your heart out, Tommy.